Hi, I'm Danielle Dangleman. Today we're going to talk about the Volusia Forever program. I am the Volusia Forever coordinator. Back in 2000, the voters approved the Volusia Forever program to tax themselves 0.2 mills in order to protect Volusia County's natural diversity and landscape. Volusia Forever partners with federal, state, and local entities in order to increase the properties in Volusia County that could be put into conservation. The state, federal, and local government has provided 35% of the funding in order to do this. Hi, my name is Cindy and I'm the Volusia County Land Manager. Here at Land Management, we work to restore and protect our natural areas. With Volusia Forever, we manage approximately 40,000 acres with seven preserves being open to the public. With these preserves being located throughout the county, we have a variety of land management activities that we utilize. Some of these activities include prescribed burning, mechanical management, timber management, reforestation, and trail maintenance. My name is Marsha. I'm an adopt a trail volunteer here at Doris Leaper Preserve. This is one of Volusia County's conservation lands located between Port Orange and New Smyrna Beach, situated on Spruce Creek. This preserve is about 2,500 acres. And while it's not the largest of the conservation lands, it really does offer a lot of amenities and a lot of opportunities to have fun out here. You can hike, you can bike, if you want to be on the water, there's a canoe and kayak launch. There's a boardwalk, an observation tower. If you want to have a picnic under a shady pavilion, please come on out and bring the kids to use the playground. But be aware, this preserve has five separate entrances. The preserve is situated around Spruce Creek. Spruce Creek is an estuary. An estuary is formed when salty ocean water combines with fresh, fresh water from upland sources and creates this brackish environment. This brackish environment prom promotes a tremendous amount of biodiversity. An estuary also encompasses different habitats such as a salt marsh, a mangrove swamp, or a mud flat, which again gives rise and promotes a, the, all of this biodiversity. We've talked about the biodiversity here on Spruce Creek, and one of the ways we can explore that is through the use of a seine net. A seine net is actually a way to fish uh, with a net that is essentially vertical, that's dragged or walked through the water along the shore. So um, we're gonna try that and see what we come up with. So here at Doris Leaper, besides doing a lot of fun activities and learning about the great biodiversity, you can actually learn about some ancient history. Thousands of years ago, native peoples who inhabited this area left behind something known as a shell midden. Very simply, a shell midden is a, a collection or a mound of shells, debris, and other byproducts of human activity. Archaeologists have uh, excavated these sites to learn and uh, discover how these people lived. Throughout the area here, there are several significant and very well-preserved shell middens. And in fact, one of the larger ones, it's called Spruce Creek Mound, is found right here in the preserve on one of the bluffs on the creek. This is the only conservation land that's named after an, a person, Doris Leeper. Just exactly who was she? She was a painter, a sculptor, a champion of the arts, and a real champion for the environment. She was born in North Carolina, in 1929 and attended Duke University with the intention of becoming a brain surgeon. But she discovered her real passion was art. She moved down to this area in 1958 and the home that she lived in still exists in Canaveral National Seashore. She started creating her art, she started becoming famous. And at the same time she was becoming famous, she was very concerned that her surroundings were being threatened by development. So. The woman that she was, she became a fierce environmentalist, pushed hard for the creation of, National sea, of Canaveral National Seashore, and also she pushed very hard for the preservation of this wilderness area right here in, in, on Spruce Creek. So in honor of her efforts, this conservation land has been named after her. Hey guys, 
Lisa Cherry. I am an environmental specialist with the County of Volusia. I'm based out of Lyonia Environmental Center. I'm super excited to be out here at Deep Creek Preserve today. It's one of my favorite of our conservation lands. Uh, it's one of the most recent purchased um, through the Volusia Forever funds back in 2010 and 2011. Um, this is a great preserve. It's a pretty large one. There's over 8,000 acres and many, many trails out here. We, I think we have four trails with miles and miles of hiking. Um, so you can come out and go for a hike. You can bring a bicycle and go biking. If you have horses, bring those out. It's a great area to explore. Uh, you're gonna find different plant communities. You're gonna find all kinds of wildlife you could view. We've got um, bobcats and foxes and we saw a swallowtail kite this morning. So great birding opportunities out here. We've got fox squirrels. So a lot of really good um, information that you can uh, learn about and come out and view. And it's just a really, really beautiful area. Uh, one of the great features out here at Deep Creek is this great covered um, picnic pavilion. Uh, so that's available to you if you come out and visit. Uh, we've done a lot of homeschool programs out here through Lyonia Environmental Center and we utilize this space a lot. So it's really great. It's a nice little shady area. Get out of some of the heat. Uh, and one of the cool animals that we have that lives out here are the fox squirrels. I don't know if you've ever seen a fox squirrel before, but you would know it if you did because they're going to be about twice the size of our normal gray squirrels. Uh, so they live out here and they make nests in the trees. They utilize things like Spanish moss and leaves. Uh, they love to eat the acorns from turkey oak trees and the seeds from pine cones. And they also will eat fungi and uh, seeds and nuts and berries and things like that. So uh, maybe you'll run into one. All right, guys, we're out here um, and found this amazing plant that is only found here in Volusia County. It is called the Rugal's pawpaw, and this is it right here. Um, it's a low-growing shrub. Uh, There's several species of pawpaws that we have here, um, but the Rugal's is endemic just to Volusia County, so that makes it really, really special. And right now, it's blooming, which it does this in the spring. There's some amazing small little yellow flowers. And in the a few months from now, we'll have some fruit on here. And the fruit looks like uh, about the size and color of a brown bee. So really awesome. Uh, it's great to come out here and be able to observe this very, very special plant that we just have here in our county. So come out, check it out. Hello everyone, my name is Danielle and I'm an environmental specialist with Volusia County. Welcome to Hickory Bluff Preserve, about 135 acres of pristine natural area featuring a variety of ecosystems. This preserve is about 135 acres with two miles of trail. So if you do have an opportunity to come out here and visit, you'll enjoy hiking, biking, horseback riding, and even camping along with a variety of opportunities to observe wildlife. Welcome to the St. Johns River. This river is a unique system because it's one of two in North America that flows north. Why does it flow north? Because of the change in topography of about 30 feet. This river is home to a variety of species of wildlife. It's predominantly freshwater, and you'll notice that it kind of has a dark blackish tinge, and that's due to the tannins in the water that come from the pine trees and pine leaves that fall in. Welcome to the Bat House here at Hickory Bluff Preserve. Some ways that we can protect these awesome creatures are to put our own bat houses up. Now if you do put a bat house up, don't be discouraged if they don't identify it immediately. It takes a year or two for them to recognize it seasonally. Bats are the only flying mammals globally. Some other creatures can glide, but not all of them have that special membrane along their fingers, just like us, that helps them pump their wings and fly. Bats here in Florida, there's about 13 different species, and they're all exclusively insectivorous. This is really important to protect our agricultural crops and help out our farmers. If you love bats like me and want to help in their conservation, you can put up bat houses. You can also reduce your pesticide use. That ensures that they have plenty to eat. 
If you love avocados and bananas like me, you want to protect these species because they also pollinate fruits that we love. If you're interested in learning more about these awesome bat species, join us on some of our environmental management nighttime programs. We use this echo meter and we're able to identify what different species of bat we're finding in the nighttime sky. If you listen closely, you'll be able to hear some of the vocalizations of these guys behind me. at the bottom of the bat house is feces and that feces is shiny because the outer layer of the insect is made of chitin and that runs right through the bat and right to the bottom of the bat house. Trey Hanna here with Volusia County Environmental Management. We're out here at Wiregrass Prairie Preserve, which is approximately about 1,400 acres of kind of wetland, upland communities, just a mixture. Nice open community, as you can see in the back here. It's open to hiking, biking, and equestrian. Some of the things to remember before you come out here is if you put the address into um, a lot of your mapping devices, it might take you down this road here if you can kind of see old boy scout camp road which is impassable most of the year unless you have a four-wheel drive vehicle so just kind of be sure to map it out before you make your way out here because you don't want to find yourself kind of stuck over here in this area near lake ashby so we're out here on the southern part of wiregrass prairie preserve this is a great representation of a little bit of old florida so as you look out over this area you can really see how open it is and you have kind of scattered longleaf pine trees and pine trees through this area and if you really think back these areas you could hike through pretty easily animals can move through which really we have started to prevent fire a lot more so we have these areas that are really overgrown with brush where this is more of kind of old florida and how it looked you've got a wire grass understory here you do have some palmetto and a variety of other plants as you go through this area but you can really just see how it's low lying with some larger trees in the area so animals are able to move through very freely. And if you kind of look out back here, this is what we consider a little bit more natural now, which is, is not really what we're looking for. It's really overgrown in that area and the animals have a little bit harder time moving through there. So this is a beautiful representation out behind me here of a, a, just a great longleaf wiregrass habitat. And wiregrass itself can be a little bit challenging to manage and that really needs to be burned in the summertime. And as you can kind of tell today, summertime brings winds, either real dry season, could be real wet season. And also it's a little warm out there to be doing prescribed burns in the summertime. So wiregrass, while it needs that burn in the summertime to help it seed, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for it to kind of manage on these lands. We're out here on the southern part of Lake Ashby at Wiregrass Prairie Preserve. We're on the kind of the north end of Wiregrass Prairie Preserve. We're gonna take you on a little bit of walk through this cypress swamp that we have here. I wanna to talk to you also a little bit about Explore Volusia programs, where you're really able to get out with a group of people to hike, bike, kayak, and also we do eco buggy tours. So as we're walking through here, you can see these cypress knees and the cypress trees themselves. And this area, since our water table right now is pretty low, would mainly be underwater. But our water table is very low, so it's really neat to be able to walk through this type of habitat. Just coming out here, we saw, we've saw we seen snakes, possibly otter prints right there on the shoreline. But this is just one of the coolest habitats that we have in our area that doesn't get explored too much. So those Explore Volusia programs, you might not enjoy it all the time, but if you make it out to these areas, we'll really kind of get you to these places that you might not have seen just from the, the trails at Wiregrass Prairie Preserve, but really to kind of bring you out into these areas that you might not get to see. Hey guys, it's Helen. We're out here in Lyonia Preserve. It's a gorgeous day. Behind me is 360 acres of amazing scrub habitat. 
The scrub habitat is super important to local species like our Florida scrub jays and our gopher tortoises. We also have three different hiking trails out here, all the way down from half a mile, all the way up to two and a half miles, just about. So you kind of get to pick your pace. What's so special about this land? Well, this land is actually a section 16 land. What does that mean? Way, way back in the day, lands were divided up into parcels. These parcels at every 16th one, they were gonna be dedicated to education, awareness, and the preservation of nature. So that's one thing that makes this area in Lyonia Preserve so special. You can also find out here native species such as Florida rosemary, sand live oak, saw palmetto. Let's go back to those animal species I was talking about, right? The Florida scrub jay. Maybe you've heard the Florida scrub jay go along with scrub habitat. You know, this Florida scrub jay is Florida's only endemic bird species. What does endemic mean? That's kind of a big word. Well, endemic means it's only found here. You can only come to scrub habitat to find our Florida scrub jay. And they are these beautiful blue birds. Our juveniles are gonna be a little bit more gray in color but they're awesome. They are cooperative breeders. Do we know what cooperative breeders are? That kind of means that the young stick around for another couple years to help raise the next group. They're super smart animals. What they do is they will hide up to 3,000 acorns and they remember where each one is, which is amazing. I can't even remember where I left my keys half the time. So they also don't like to travel that far from home. You know, some people are more homebody, so they stick sort of in the same area as where they grew up. Another awesome thing, I mentioned this is scrub habitat. How do we know that it's scrub habitat? Well, it's characterized by this really cool sand. It's called sugar sand. It means it's super fine. It's like sugar. Creative, right? I know. What's really cool about this land is this used to be the ancient beach. Yes, I know, right in the middle of Florida? That's crazy. What do you mean this was the beach? Long, long time ago, millions of years ago, this used to be the shoreline. And you know that we have all these sort of hills behind me. It used to be the sand dunes and the beach with the sugar sand around me. But that means that this area is kind of in short demand now because as sea levels rise, it's really popular for development. Okay? It, because it's high up and it's dry. So there are these important lands where our gopher tortoises and scrub jays live. They're shrinking, which is why we need to preserve areas such as this. But I hope you come out and join me. It's a beautiful day, and I can't wait to see you out here. Hi, I'm Megan Martin from Green Volusia. I'm here today in Southwest Deland at the Scrub Oak Preserve, which is a 134 acre preserve that connects Blue Springs State Park to the Lake Beresford Park area. It acts as an important wildlife corridor for bears. It also plays an important role for water filtration as its deep, porous, sandy soils recharge the water on its way to Blue Springs. This successful restoration site is also great for the Florida scrub jay and gopher tortoises. Let's go check it out. As we mentioned earlier with the wildlife at Scrub Oak Preserve, I'm here next to a gopher tortoise burrow. Gopher tortoises are a keystone species here in the preserve, and they make burrows that provide refuge for a number of species. This 70-acre portion of Scrub Oak Preserve is an example of a restored sand pine scrub, an imperiled natural community. Acquired in 2008 through the Volusia Forever program, Scrub Oak Preserve was an overgrown scrub habitat with dense, tall sand pines and very thick mid-story vegetation. The restoration process started with the removal of the sand pines by a logging company, followed by some mechanical treatment of the mid-story vegetation. After the mechanical treatment, prescribed fire was reintroduced, followed by removal of the larger oak trees. The scrub was now more open, allowing the ground vegetation and the more scrubby oaks to thrive. After two years, the scrub jays started frequenting the now lower, more open scrub, and currently, there are believed to be three families of Florida scrub jays utilizing the restored area. Hi everybody, it's Melissa, usually at my base station, Lyonia Preserve. But today, Trey and I are outside exploring 
Longleaf Pine Preserve. And today we're gonna go out exploring some of the really cool things you can do here and find here. Some of the things you can do here are hiking, of course, biking, and exploring on a horse. It's over 12,000 acres for you to explore. So we hope you can find some cool things while you're out here. And we hope you can see some of the things we spotlight today. This is the hooded pitcher plant. And it is a carnivorous plant that entraps inside this little area here. And you can kind of see some of the remnants of insects that have been trapped. Like I think those were ants inside the pitcher plant. And they do this by attracting the insects in various different ways depending on the plant. Some of them will kind of use sticky substances like tar flower has a sticky sweet substance on its stamen that will initially attract and trap most insect species. And once they are stuck on that sticky stamen, stamen they actually stay there and are digested partially by the plant and decompose and become part of the plant's matter. Hooded pitcher plants have come in all different sizes, flowering times, and this is a good time of the year to see the flower of the hooded pitcher plant. They actually can trap inside the hood and once the insect is on top of the hood portion of the plant, they then fall victim into the trap inside the plant, as you saw. This is also a really cool wetland area. Other species that are out here besides the tar flower and the hooded pitcher plant are also sundew and we have bladderwort. So hopefully you can come out here when you're hiking or biking and see some of these throughout the year. Trey Haney here with Volusia County Environmental Management. We're out here at Lake George Wildlife Management Area, which is actually not one of our Volusia Forever funded conservation lands. We still manage about 8,000 acres out here, and there's a total of about 35,000 acres in the Wildlife Management Area, which is a cooperation between St. John Water Management District and the Florida Forest Services. Lake George itself is the second largest lake in Florida, and it's one of the highest eagle populations in the continental United States. The bombing range that you can see here dates all the way back to World War II and now it's under the operational control of nearby Naval Air Station Jacksonville. 